Hello and welcome back to Continental Club where we discuss the hottest topics in European football as the three amigos back together after a one week hiatus. It's damn good to be back guys. McCubs, how are you? Yeah, I'm good thanks. I'm very well. Um, yeah, it has been a while, hasn't it? Mm. Was it just one week apart? It felt like it felt like longer, felt like but, longer. Uh, but it wasn't. Yeah, how how are you doing? How was your break? It was good, thank you. Yes, I was at a wedding in Scotland, and then I did a little staycation in the UK uh, oh, with Grace. Uh, yeah, we went up to my mum's house in Yorkshire. We stayed in London for a few days. Went to the beach at Whitstable in Kent. Mm. It was a really nice staycation. Actually, I'd highly recommend staycations. Mm -hmm. uh, Henry, have you ever done a staycation? Oh yeah, holiday UK all the way. You, know? you love a you love a random trip around the UK actually. No, I like I like Wales. I, I like to get up to Scotland. Uh, I went to I think I did Suffolk this year. Went to um, did like Suffolk. I, yeah, <laughs> Southwold. Yeah, it's good. It, there's loads of little gems knocking around on the coast. And, there are indeed. You know, we've got many a mountain, many a peak to hike up. So no, I do love it. I'm glad. It is weird in the summer. In the summer we. Uh, we in the winter, sorry, when we're not all going away, it's like a consistent run of just us three, us three, us three. Mm -hmm. But the last few months has been chop and change, and it is, it is heartbreaking. Been, it's Monday, it's crazy. Monday vibes. Well, I mean, Monday and Sunday vibes has been a revolving cast as well, hasn't it? I've actually found it quite fun, actually, mixing and matching on the shows. Doing on different shows. Continental Club, though, obviously always better when it's the original trio, as most people will attest to. So, um, Guys, yeah. that's, that's brought a tear to my eye. What, what, what an ode to us and to England. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a loving of ourselves. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into the football, guys, because today we are grading. So sort of not a ranking. We're actually grading them from A to F. Massive transfers that could still happen this summer. And we do need to be firmly agreed on the grading after every transfer. So do not let me forget because I do have a tendency to... We guys, have to agree it ourselves between ourselves. Well, oh, okay, maybe yeah. we have a little debate and then yeah, we settle cool, on cool, one. Cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Henry, you are actually going to kick off with at Liam Hawkins one suggestion of Gonzalo Ramos to PSG because this has been talked about in the last few hours. We film this on a Wednesday. Yeah. No, this has kind of come out of nowhere, really. Um, but it, it does make a lot of sense. This isn't as if it's not a strike we've been not talking about for a while. He's obviously big season last year, nineteen goals in the Primera Liga, I think twenty seven in all competitions and uh, a great hat-trick at the World Cup for mm. Portugal. He does look like he's ultimately going to lead the line for that Portugal side once well, Ronaldo stops. I mean, has, maybe Ronaldo has stopped. I don't know if he is leading the Will he the ever line retire? Anymore. I Will don't know. He, mm. He'll always command his space. Oh, <laughs> anyway, we're not talking about that chump. Um, so, yeah, uh, this, this is so Fernando Callas, who's a Spanish football expert, he went on the transfer show and basically said that PSG are really interested in him and that Benfica would love to sell because obviously their model is they produce these players, they work them up and then they sell them for a great, great fee. And then Ekrem Konur, who's a fairly well-known kind of transfer journalist on the Twitter sphere, or X, as it's known these days, mm. uh, they've said PSG will bid 75 million for the 22-year-old, which does sound roughly kind of the ballpark figure you'd expect for him. I mean... Last year really was his breakout campaign. The year before, he was fine. But um, this year was the season that we saw him move to centre forward. Darwin Nunez's um, replacement in that Benfica lineup, And he really is sort of, although he can play in a lot of positions, he loves picking up the ball and driving with it. He can drop deep, drop wide. If you look at his um, heat map, he, he does play a little bit of everywhere. But in the box is where he is most prolific. And he is one of the most exciting guys when it comes to making that last little dart into the six-yard box. He, that, he, he's an absolute poacher. I mean, his non-penalty XG per 90 of 0.8 was not surpassed by any single player to play 1,500 minutes across the top seven European leagues in 2023, 22, wow. last season, which is pretty cool. And only Haaland scored more goals from inside the six-yard box than him, 89% of his shots in the box. Which, when you think about PSG, that's probably what they want. They probably want someone to... I know... Mbappe had previously demanded kind of a um, focal, focal point, point. yeah. Mm -hmm. But his demands are quite clearly out the window at this point. And yeah, I actually think when Icardi did a good job and it's kind of similar ilk in that mm -hmm. um, PSG side, he did score goals. This is someone who's going to go in and start most games. I think he'd be brilliant um, as an out-and-out centre-forward in that line. He, he He's really, really promising. He takes loads of, loads of shots. Okay, this is for Benfica, who are obviously like the big stat bullies of the Primera Liga. So we should take it with a pinch of salt. But that's going to translate well over to PSG, isn't it? In in, in Ligue 1. Uh, yeah, he, he, I think he's just a very exciting forward. Massive future. 75 million euros. Look, if they sell Mbappe, they're going to have a ton of money. But I quite like this kind of signing. I think he's... A, you know, I know it, Primera Liga is not one of the top, top divisions. But at the same time, Benfica were doing so many exciting things last season. And Ramos was central 
part of that. We wouldn't look at how well Enzo Fernandez has been playing since he's gone to Chelsea. They, 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 these are great players. So yeah, I'm I'm all behind this transfer if they go for it. I think it's a bit sad out of the box. I know that uh, at Teo Nel Messi suggested Victor Ossiman to PSG. This is way more realistic, Gonzalo Ramos happening. Yeah, Osman's don't... just not happening, is it? Osman's not happening unless they pay a really stupid fee, probably double, something close to double what Gonzalo Ramos will ultimately cost. Um, I think Osman in himself has said that he's probably going to stay at Napoli. He's not. He's he's basically said he would think about a move, but he's not going to push for a move. That seems to be the understanding I'm getting. Whereas Ramos, you can see him making the step up now because he's at that point where he's sort of outgrown Benfica. So yeah, well, well I, I do feel like Benfica will just charge at least a hundred mil for him though. Like that seventy five is an opening bid, isn't it? Like I just don't think that's going to be enough. You don't think given, given what no, nah, given what what Benfica have sold their stars for in the past, right? I don't know what he might, does. He have a release clause, Gonzalo Ramos, like. A, I, I think if he does, reading there was like a hundred, but yeah. I, I might, that might not be. Totally like, I just feel like it will take, yeah. Given how much they charged for Enzo, given that Gonzalo Ramos is only going to get better, I do feel like seventy-five is not the price point at which do PSG you, will they'll do business with PSG. Do you not think that Enzo? They just really didn't want to sell him. You know, they they were ultimately saying, look, if you want him, there's a release clause. You've got to go for it. I I feel yeah. as if this is a bit more of a. He's been he's come through the Benfica ranks. He's now played sort of two, three seasons in the first team. Do you not think this is more of a okay? We accept the kind of situation. They're not they're not complete mugs, Benfica. I think they know yeah. they can't just continuously charge some absurd fees. They're uh, definitely not mugs. That's what. But they do, but they but they are very successful in in charging absurd fees. I don't know. Like I think, um, like if if PSG if, if Mbappe does leave PSG, then you know they're, they're like, well, you've just received three hundred million for him. No, no, like, you're right. Give, give, give you're us right. a huge, huge fee. I think that that would be my only concern with it. And also, if Mbappe does leave, then suddenly that attack doesn't have like it's only Neymar who's the one who's really driving it. You don't have like an elite creator necessarily in the midfield. So I think you'd then need to maybe sign someone else, maybe an attacking midfielder or someone, someone out wide who can who can create a ton of chances. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mbappe would be at, like losing Messi and Mbappe. Although you know that that team will become a little bit more, I guess, working for each other a little bit more without a bit those. Of, a bit more of a team. <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit more of a team. But then you lose something, don't you? I mean, you lose oh, yeah. the two best players in the world, like. Um, from from that team, so like he he would have huge shoes to fill. I don't, I think it would be a good signing. I think you like you say, he's he's one of the best strikers out there. I'm actually quite surprised that his name hasn't come up more. You know, he was linked to Man United last season, wasn't he? Quite a lot. Um, his name hasn't come up anywhere near as much as the other kind of strikers on the market this summer. I mean, like Appender already got his move to Leipzig, but a lot of talk about him. Obviously, a lot of talk about Hoyland. Um, so I'm kind of surprised at that. Um, but maybe it's just yeah. because Benfica do have quite a big um, price tag on him. Yeah, there's, there's, he did miss a lot of chances last season. It should be said. I think Sofa Score said 22 in all competition. Uh, 22, sorry, just the league alone. So he is a little bit wasteful. But I, I, I more look at that as room to grow. Because what was I that said, like 22 big chances missed? Yeah, or whatever. yeah, yeah. So I mean, how that quantifies exactly, I'm not quite sure. But essentially, his XG was around the same as 1920 uh, region so yeah I think so he must like, have scored a lot of bangers this, yeah this is the first year that we've seen him really uh, well I mean that's the point he scored well, most so of his goals inside a super the box. dominant side yeah, I yeah. think Haaland missed the most big chances in the Premier League so yeah. it, it's not always the be all and end all but guys we're not talking about good transfers we're grading them we need Ooh. a grade oh, I'll go B I was thinking um, more C personally just because I feel hmm. he's a little bit too unproven to take PSG to the next level I mean very few players could without Messi and Mbappe, I'd rather sign Kane by a distance. Oh, yeah. And I think they might end up costing a similar amount. So I'm actually going to call it a C for PSG. Just for PSG. Should we go B minus? Should we agree on B minus? B minus. B minus. We're off the mark. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're moving on to <laughs> Mr. Zhao Felix. Mm. Interesting few weeks for him, McCubs. Yeah. Uh, this comes in from at FCBMB10, rather. Easy for you to say. Zhao Felix, he is flirting away with the Blaugrana. Yeah, this feels like. What is it with, with with you know high profile players in the last few weeks? Lukaku, Felix, like they're not doing themselves any favors with with what they're saying in the press. Um, this still feels really unlikely to me. Obviously, anything can happen with Barca. Like you know, we've seen them do some wild business over the last few years. But <laughs> if Atletico Madrid are still holding out for you know that eighty million euro asking price, it's like plonkers. 
unless Barca want to do some loan deal, it just doesn't feel like it, it, it works for any party here, really. Like, um, yeah, if you, if you, unless you've kind of been living under a rock, Felix, yeah, said last week that Barcelona has always been my first choice. I'd love to join them. Always been my dream since I was a kid. The dream would come true for me if, if this happens. Obviously, that's going to piss off uh, the Atleti hierarchy, the Atleti fans. The you know, huge... You know, huge, huge rivals in Barcelona. Let's not, let's not get it twisted. Um, and yeah, I know, I know Griezmann got the number seven shirt, stuff like that. So I, I could see why. And Felix just hasn't, has clearly not been happy there for at least a year. Um, so like, I understand he's in a difficult situation, and it's not his fault that he got, you know, that he he was the subject of that huge transfer fee and has effectively been priced out of a move ever since like I do feel for the guy um, but at the same time it just feels like the wrong play to make like why are you like pushing for a move to a club that like out of you know out of all the elite clubs in Europe definitely cannot afford you um, and if they are going to be able to come up with any deal it's not going to be until very late in the window I think Fabrizio Romano said as much that if Barca do want to sign him, it's going to be a waiting game because they will need to get other players off the books and they'll need to do probably some kind of jiggery Crazy to, to to make it work. And I mean, you know, the, 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 the players potentially on the chopping block for Barca are Franck Kessier, who we'll get onto in a bit, Ferran Torres, who I understand, but I don't think they're going to be able to get the money back for him that they paid for him. Um, and Rafinha, who I think, you know, really played himself into form last year and was probably one of... Barcelona's key players by the end of the campaign so um, yeah it feels unlikely to me and also it just doesn't make sense to me as well I think we were talking about this last week actually on Continental Club um, towards the end it's just where does he fit in that team really he's not a winger he's not really a striker at least you know Barca still have Lewandowski so what's the point um, and he's not yeah he's not a natural fit to be his like long-term heir um, and he's not really I mean, yeah, if anyone you're going to compare him to, it's probably Pedri, but then he's not really, he's not a proper midfielder like Pedri is as well. He just doesn't have as much to his game. Um, you know, defensively, he he's just not really up to the mark in the same way that the rest of that midfield is. And that's why it's no surprise that, you know, publications like Mundo Deportivo are still saying that Xavi much prefers Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva has been the kind of, all-round attacking midfielder that Barcelona have been after and have been flirting with for the last, what, like, year, two mm. years? Mm. Big time. Um, and, you know, they obviously have a pretty good relationship with City for, for obvious reasons, but they have, you know, they've they've gotten Gundogan and Ferran Torres from them in the last, in the last year uh, or in the last 18 months. Um, and that just makes a lot more sense. It, it makes a lot more sense um, that they would do that. And again, uh, our old friend Fernando Callas, I think on yeah Sky Sports, maybe was it today as well, saying that um, that you know the Barcelona move could happen, but Benfica apparently want him back. Galatasaray That's also odd, in, also interested. Yeah, ex exactly. Like I mean, th those are the kind of level of clubs that. Felix is kind of cut out for now. When we look at his numbers, it, it, it you know it makes a lot of sense. And to be fair, like he is, he is quite productive in that. Like he, he takes four shots per ninety minutes. He creates almost three chances per ninety minutes. That was that was his numbers from Chelsea. Um, but those two point eight key passes per ninety minutes um, only translate to zero point zero five expected assists per ninety minutes, which is pretty damning given that he was picking up really good spaces in the box and yet the chances he was creating were not high value chances mm. at Chelsea and I know that Chelsea attack wasn't very good but I think that says a lot I think about his end product um, and it's actually his goal and assist numbers are fine but like in order to take it in order for an elite club to take a gamble on him um, even if it is a lone move because you know he you know wages are big and you know, if you want to get him at the end, if you want to buy him, the option to buy is always going to be pretty big, at least if Atleti stay on the course that they are in terms of his asking price. You need to have the you need to have the goal and assist numbers and you have to have the underlying numbers to back it up. And Felix just doesn't have those. His dribbling success has also like taking a massive dip in the last year. I think gone from like 60% success to like 36%. So um yeah, like I think th those are the kind of metrics that, uh, like you, you have you you can't ignore 
when you're when, when this kind of money is involved so yeah i i would be giving this a pretty low one i'd be going for a D, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd go for an E on this one. Yeah, I agree. E, I, I feel, I don't know where he goes. I genuinely don't know where he goes. Galatasaray, Galatasaray don't need him. Galatasaray just got Wilf Zahar, who plays out wide and can go through the middle. They need to surely qualify for the Champions League in order to even get him through the door. And they drew their sort of first leg of their qualifier in Lithuania. So, yeah, I Benfica genuinely could be an option for a loan next year. And that's, don't get me wrong, might be nice for him to go home but rebuild some confidence play Champions League football but yeah I don't know where he's going and I've, I've quite miffed by this one but yeah. yeah I mean I only said Galatasaray so I don't need him because not only have they got Wolf Zaha in but they've got Akadi, they've got Dries Mertens they've got Zaniolo it feels like they're pretty yeah. stocked of attacking players and you know they just probably don't need to take another risk with another heavy wage packet when they've just signed all these players in the last 18 months or so I thought he was okay for Chelsea I yeah. thought he could have his numbers could look better. I remember him hitting the post a lot, uh, maybe like three or three or four times across his Chelsea spell. Look, I didn't think it was worth Chelsea spending that money on him that money that they wanted, but I didn't think he was a disaster. But for Barcelona, it doesn't make total sense, which I put on Twitter the other day, and someone came back and he said they could play that Gavi role, you know, that sort of inverted left mm. winger that Xavi was using towards the end of the mm. season. Again, I just... You Gavi just gives him. you more defensive work, doesn't he? Yeah. If, if anything, he'd be a better fit at somewhere like PSG if they lose Mbappe because they will potentially need uh, you know, someone who just produces... Bodies. Yeah. yeah, or just someone who produces a little bit of magic because that, that forward line is missing that magic. Like, Barcelona don't really need that race. He just doesn't, yeah, it just doesn't seem a good fit in that sense. Fair enough. All agreeing on E. I was actually tempted to go F, but E's fine. Uh, right, let's move on to Anton Jakobsen's suggestion of David Ryan. I'm going to do this quite briefly because hopefully it went live yesterday, if all being well. Our new show, Transfer Talk. Same mm. name, new show dropped with mm. Henry and Joe. Uh, out on a, well, I won't, I won't even describe it. Go watch it after you finish this. It looks brilliant. It's transfer talk as you've never seen it before. Oof. There we have it. The yellow and black borders. It's back. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> right. Well, David I, do, like, I didn't, rea I didn't realise that that was inspired from yes. the original. I forgot about that. Heritage. Heritage. Anyone who Heritage. remembers transfer talk, but no ticker along the bottom. <laughs> People still comment underneath Football Daily videos, being like, "Where is transfer talk?" Yeah, well, and then usually there's comments underneath that, that being like it you know it, it, Four was, years meant, it was meant it was meant to die like, yeah you know, like, <laughs> quite but rightly it was meant to die late transfer news yeah. that was our thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god right anyway david Raya to Bayern munich yes this has actually materialized in the last few days that Bayern munich are considering david Raya as an option brentford have supposedly set a 40 million pound asking fee for david Raya. he only has one year left on his contract he was close to joining spurs that ended up collapsing uh, they, they end up sending Vicario. I actually thought there'd be more interest from Chelsea this summer. Hasn't really materialised no. either. Maybe they've just got other priorities. Moses Caicedo being one. Man United end up going for Onana. I think that was a good call in the end. But the goalkeeping situation at, at Bayern Munich is a, quite an interesting one because obviously Neuer broke his leg after the World Cup. He's 37 now. He'll be 38 in March. But I don't know whether this is a this is a, a signing to come in and be their number one or to become Neuer's number two because Neuer's now back in full training apparently mm. in pre-season and Jan Sommer is being sold uh, to Inter Milan potentially hopefully if that deal goes through good for him Jan Sommer I think that'd be mm. a good move for him uh, it didn't quite work out as I expected at Bayern Munich last year so they do need another goalkeeper in but New does David Raul want to go to sit on the bench New Bell's just gone on loan to Stuttgart yes, yes. as well so, yeah. Stuttgart. yeah considering how good he was for Monaco that's quite surprising that Stuttgart, who've just been just about surviving the last two years, I managed to get hold of him. So yeah, I think someone backs up your point. Where, where does Raya fit into that situation? Yeah, I'd like to see him eventually become number one quite soon. I mean, Neuer, as I said, pretty old now. He's missed a lot of games in the last two years with injury, not just this ski accident as yeah. well. And he, came, and he, came, uh, uh, that, that was when he was particular. That was probably the worst period of his career wasn't it uh, like immediately after that big injury was it in around 2017 2018 yeah. he had a really rough 12 months after that he really did and people were like oh is this the end of him he then came back but he's never he's never quite been the same he is also getting on which is yeah under understandable and david raya it feels like the right stage of his career to go be a number one somewhere so i would be reluctant if i was him unless i had a guarantee of being that to, to go and sit on the bench because he's 27 now he's made close to 300 career appearances but his journey has actually been quite a strange one. I didn't actually realise until looking into it. He was bought from Blackburn. Yeah. You know, he spent the previous it's period, like 3 .5 a long, million, a long time at yeah. Blackburn, spent time at Stockport on loan. He's played in the conference. He's played in League One. He's played in the Championship. And now he's in the Premier League. And last year in the Premier League, he wasn't, 
you know, I don't think he's necessarily of the same quality as Allison or uh, potentially Edison below yeah. that as well. But he's in that bracket just below that of, of a really, really solid keeper. You know, save percentage was in the best in the Premier League last year. I think he was fifth for expected goals saved. Sorry, joint third with five for expected goals mm. saved. I think that was level with Kepa. So he had a really good season, but I don't want to see him go and sit on the bench at Bayern Munich. So I'd be looking for a guarantee of that. So for that reason, I'm almost more doing this from David Raya's perspective. I'd mm. probably put this as a C plus B minus. But from Bayern's perspective, I don't think it's a crazy fee for a good goalkeeper. I don't know. What? Yeah. Where are you guys on this? I also don't think Bayern need to have like, like I don't think, you know, yeah, like you said, I don't think Bayern need a world-class goalkeeper. Like they've, They've invested so, so at yeah. Back, they, they've invested so well in the defence. I think you know, in Thomas Tuchel, they have a probably a better defensive coach than their predecessor Julian Nagelsmann. Arguably better than Hansi Flick as well. Actually, um, like I think they're going to be yeah a lot more solid next season. And and David Raya does you know David Raya can do the job that that Neuer was doing essentially um not to as good a level at least in terms of Neuer at his peak obviously but um so I'm rambling here yeah I I I quite like this move actually I think I think David Raya can come in and and be that starting that yeah. starting keeper look at what like Ulreich did a couple of years ago whenever it was like Super was, was, was yeah was brilliant um at Bayern and yeah like I kind of thought that would be Jan Sommer to be honest I kind of thought Jan Sommer would would be trusted more um and it's getting it's kind, of, it's kind of funny i guess like inter are having to penny pinch more aren't they like but it it felt almost like raya as the onana replacement seemed seemed mm -hmm. to make like tons of sense but i guess Inter just aren't you know that they, they kind of want to keep hold of that i think when we did that, how that to replace windfall. your outgoing transfer a couple of weeks ago i suggested david raya for inter i'm surprised they never looked at him but yeah he's more expensive it must, it must, it must just be the money thing uh henry are you happy with b should we put this as a b yeah i'd go b I go B. He's a, he's, a, he's a quality keeper and it doesn't matter how good your defence is, they need someone who can instil confidence behind them. We've seen times and time again, if you get a bad keeper behind a good defence, that can still kind of affect affect their kind of um, connection going on back there. Sorry, not really a good word I'm looking for, but anyway. Yeah, B. You're B. Right. Happy with B. Okay, there we have it. Right, there's loads to get through, so let's yeah, be right, rapido. Right, Henry, Sean15 McKenzie said Frank Kessie to Juve. Right, if this happens at what apparently has been reported... Sport in Spain saying that they will get him on a loan, Juventus, get Frank Kessie on loan with an obligation to buy of around 10 to 15 million euros. If that happens, I'm giving this an A. I'm giving this an A straight away because, yes, Frank Kessie had a terrible season last year. Actually made a lot of appearances, 43 for Barcelona's last term. Did he? Yeah, which is surprising. Bench, though, but, right? yes, in La Liga, only seven starts, less than a thousand minutes. His crowning moment was a goal against... Real Madrid. Yeah. Didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't he score was two it, winners in Clasico? Was it not a Clasico winner, yeah. Well, Clasico was his big moment, but beyond that, he had a pretty dismal season. And if you look at his stats, he was a shadow of his former self. All of his creative numbers, shots, key passes, dribbles, they've collapsed. Defensive contribution as well. I, I compared the heat maps. He was playing in roughly similar situ situations, mm. maybe a bit more on the right than he was used to at Barcelona. But the principle is... It was a guy. The new at Milan, sorry. Sorry, yes, at Milan. But that, but isn't that just because he was playing like a completely different? Like he just was playing in a team where like everyone else was trusted to do all the yeah, all yeah. that stuff more than him. Whereas at Milan, like he had a lot more responsibility, well, right? It's it seems like a guy that lost the kind of edge that made him so good at AC Milan. And also, I think you've made this point a number of times, Deegs. Coming off the bench isn't easy to impact games and show your worth all the time. He was constantly coming off the bench. Those seven starts, he must have felt so much pressure to sort of show what he could do. I mean, a fifth of his minutes in La Liga came in the last three games of the season, which shows you sort of how little he was used for much of the campaign. If he goes to Juventus, if they get him on loan, bear in mind they don't have European football, then they can... Because I think they will do all right next season, Juventus. If they get back into position where they can pay 10 to 15 million euros for a 26-year-old, he'll be 27 by then. But this is perfect because their midfield is light. Weston McKennie's not going to stick around, let's face it. Last year, they were giving minutes to Fagioli, Sula, Baranchea, who are all, don't get me wrong, are really exciting to see them hand youngsters minutes. But you need someone with a bit of experience. They've lost Cuadrado and they've also lost Imeria coming in. If you can get hold of Kessie, who's got over 200 Serie A appearances to his name already, then I think this is just an absolute win-win situation. They need someone in the middle. Pogba's obviously not reliable with his fitness issues. Is he? I think Kessie... I'm almost gutted that he's still not AC Milan. He could have been a superstar in that mm. side and they didn't get any money for him. But it is what it is. And yeah, I think 
I think if this move happens, bear in mind they were thinking about paying lots of money for Thomas Party to get someone younger and someone, as my in my opinion, equally as good. I'd definitely be excited by this move from by Juventus. Certainly at this point in their troubled history. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about Kessie. I don't know. I feel like there's there's rumours at the moment that they're thinking of consider, sell, selling sorry Locatelli, and I'd rather keep Locatelli than bring in Kessie. Yeah. Personally, I just think Locatelli is a bit more of a unique profile, and Kessie's best bits are probably as a final third player. You know, late runs and scoring penalties. Do you? They need that in the same way they need a tempo controller. But I agree, it's not the worst transfer. Where are we going to place it at, lads? I your... wouldn't. I wouldn't go for. Eight. Yeah, I wouldn't go for a person. I just think Kessie's not as. <laughs> he's just not as sure. You know, even when he first came in at Milan, like he had years where he wasn't really contributing in the way that they expected him to i know he's more experienced now he's more of a known quantity but still yeah he's not like he's not that i mean he doesn't need to be a game changer necessarily but come on yeah bear in mind it's a, it's a good price it's a good price bear, for him it's a good price for him but no european football having to use youngsters in midfield experienced steady out operator uh someone who's good enough to be bought by barcelona to get him in for 10 to 15 million euros and Juventus's current situation, surely this is a great transfer. B minus. B, B plus. <laughs> B I don't mind going, I don't, I'm going B. I'll go B. B. Straight B. Let's go straight B. B. Let's go B. Fine, straight B it is. Okay, let's continue our journey through Syria and talk mm. about a player linked with Roma. Mm. Renato Sanchez McCubbs comes in from Hazard CF. Interested to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, yeah, I think Roma have been tracking him for a little while. I think um, Mourinho's top target was um, Marcel Sabitzer. Mm. Well, obviously, he's gone to Borussia Dortmund now um, and he was going to cost money as well and Roma. Once again, are not spending any money it's all whatsoever. About the um, and fair play to them. I know, like, they're you know, th there's reasons why they're doing that, but they have, you know, obviously, they've, in terms of the free transfer they've gotten over the last 12 months, has been pretty remarkable. Um, I do quite like this, actually. I do like this. Um, Sanchez has travelled with PSG to Japan for their preseason tour. Played Al Naziri that you know yesterday or the day before, depending on when you're watching this. Um, and um, he didn't feature in that game against Al Nazir, but he did feature against Lav um, in their first preseason friendly, which was just played at their training ground. Um, but um, it's a very casual first one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it just came on at half time. And also, Ethan Mbappe has played in the last two um, games. So, um, yeah, that's quite cool. Unlike um, Killian. Well, uh, Killian has actually. Uh, did Killian. Oh, maybe Killian didn't play in the last one, but he, he can't played play in the, the last yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so. Um, Anyway, to cut a long story short, uh, he was uh, pictured not training with the... He was pictured training separately from the team in Japan. Um, but at the same time, there's no indication whether that is alluding to any pot potential transfer. Knowing him, um, it could be a fitness issue. It may well, yeah, it well, <laughs> may well be. Um, and also, like, reports from Scar Italia last week were suggesting that because Luis Enrique has come in, you know, fairly late compared to, you know, a lot of other managers who were secured before the end of the season, he really wants to take a good look at the team before sanctioning any moves away. Um, but otherwise, I think Roma are, yeah, pretty keen on him. And, yeah, I think there's basically a possibility that they could be a lone move for Renato Sanchez. He obviously was not used very much last term at PSG. I think he only had six starts in the league. Um, he did have a few separate injuries that I think disrupted his his kind of flow and his momentum. Um, but there was nothing kind of long term, um, which I guess it was a shame as well because he was playing under Galtier as well, who got the best football out of him, uh, of his career at Lille. Um, so that was a bit of a shame, um, but I don't think it's an indication of, you know, I don't think it's too big a risk for Roma, especially if they're getting him on loan and if there's no obligation as well. I imagine Rome, Roma wouldn't want an obligation um, given his injury record. I quite like it. Like Roma have been crying out for more mobility and they've got that in Andika. They've got that in Hussam Awa as well. And aside from Hussam Awa, they don't really, they don't have an experienced number eight at all in that midfield. Mm. Um, you know, Brian Cristante, very much more of a DM these days. Playing a lot of um, centre-back last year as well. Yeah, and uh, Eduardo Bove, who I think does look quite exciting, scored that goal against Bayer Leverkusen that got them into the, into the Europa League final. Um, he does look 
quite impressive, but he's only 21. He didn't really play much last year until the final month of the season. So I think it's too early to say whether he's going to be a sure far starter under Mourinho, who classically likes to have experienced heads. And yeah, I don't know, Renato Sanchez, he obviously has the physicality to be a Mourinho midfielder. Um, he has that ability to drive. And yeah, he is quite experienced at this point. And he was excellent in a Lille side. Um which did play primarily on the counter-attack. And I think his skill set really suits counter-attacking teams, um, especially ones who need to have more going through the centre um, because Roma, as impressive as they, as they were at, uh, at points last season, uh, weren't necessarily the best going down, going down the flanks um, and they lacked control in midfield. I was kind of looking at the... Uh, the kind of heat, well, the control maps of all the Serie A clubs last year. Uh, and given Roma had a really good defensive, um, really good defensive record last year, something that was missing from them, and I think, uh, I think something that probably ended up costing them their place in the Champions League was the fact that, yeah, they just did have that ability to lose control of games. And when you looked at it, it was like, basically, on average, the area just inside the opponent's half was always controlled by the opponent or most of the time was controlled by the opposition team and that just shows that they didn't really have that um yeah that stability in the center of the park or they didn't have players who could keep control of the ball going into the opposition half um and i think renato sanchez especially alongside alwa if they're going to be, you know, I don't know. I think it could be exciting having Cristante behind them too. Okay. Um, at least in an attacking sense. It might, you know, might not be that Mourinho. But even having Matic there and having two players who are really, really mobile, um, I think could be really, really exciting. So I actually do really like this transfer. I get it in terms of concerns about his previous injury record, but actually it's not been that bad in the last two years. Um, yeah, I, I quite like it. Um Fair. Yeah. Henry, you in agreement? Yeah. Give what, it a B. What, what grading would you give it? Uh, B. I think it's fine. Apparently, they were looking at Weston McKenney as well. Mm. And I prefer Renato, personally. I prefer Renato Sanchez as a player. But I am a little bit worried about the injury record, guys. I am. I feel like Roma's campaign was kind of undermined by injuries last year. Like, they were looking pretty good until, you know, Dybala picked up the occasional injury. Fine Tammy Alden. Abraham, Vinaldum, you know, Matic has had injury issues in the past. Mancini, like I just don't want another injury prone player in there. I'm not saying they're all injury prone, but they have had their issues in the past. And Renato Sanchez, unless it's a very small fee, still feels like a bit of a gamble. But it's not the worst move. I just probably move it down to a C. Oh, I think that's harsh. I would I would go for at least a B here. B B. On a, on loan. I've been out no obligations. Oh, it's a loan. I think I think it would be a loan. Yeah, I imagine okay. it would be a loan. Guys, I'm happy with B. I'm happy okay, with the online. Sweet. Okay, I sweet. thought it was a permanent transfer. Should have listened heavier. Harder? I think harder. You don't listen heavy. Anyway, let's move on to Rasmus Hoyland to Man United. Hey. Atalanta, I think, are licking their lips. This is ideal for Atalanta. They bought him for £15 million last year from Sturmgratz. They've introduced him into the first team as a regular starter in January. And now it feels like they're going to ask for about £85 million. Man United aren't going to pay that. I think I read yesterday that Man United don't really want to pay anything above 60. I still think that's a great deal for Atalanta. He yeah. scored 10 goals for them. And look, he looks really promising. And there's, you know, raw ability there. He's six foot three. He's absolutely rapid. He runs a sub 11, 100 meters. He's very, very good at picking up progressive passes in dangerous areas. He doesn't shoot. He's not a particularly wasteful shooter. He doesn't take massively high volume of chances either. Uh, but he's not a wasteful shooter. I think he was about 0.47 expected goals per 90 last year, which was only just less than Tabala, which for a 20-year-old, pretty impressive. I just think £60 million for a player out of Serie A right now. Like, no one else is going for that fee out of Serie A, except for players like Tonali, who've been playing for Italy for years, you know, who've won a Scudetto, who've got to a Champions League semi-final. Hoyland's at the start of his career. Really yeah. is at the start of his career. I like him for Man United. They need to get someone in. But I just think the desperation from Man United right now just means that Atalanta can, can charge whatever they want. Mm. I, they, they've, got, they, they've got no need to sell him to them. And I just worry that this is a player that it could potentially be a little bit overawed, a little bit swallowed up by Man United. And going in there as their only striker, along with Martial, and I know Rashford can play there, that's a lot of pressure for a guy who's got mm. six months of top-level football. 
So I'm worried about this transfer, to be honest, mm. at that fee. I think it's very easy for the Twitterati to be like, look, oh, Haaland costs less than this and his name sounds like Haaland, but you've got the Aldi version or whatever. I just think the jokes are the jokes are ready. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard. I think any I play, any, 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 play, any player going to United is, yeah, yeah, I do agree, is going to be under pressure. As a United fan, and I don't want to stick my United fa- fan hat on too much. I do. I've, I've always been quite intrigued. I've been really intrigued at, at a transfer like this. I think, like I don't know, a, a, a not quite known entity at centre forward. I think is just always really exciting, um, especially one who has the physical attributes of Hoyland. Uh, but I agree. I think 60, 60 million pounds. Atalanta can build a whole new team with that. Like they, they've got such a good recruitment department as we yeah. as we have known for years. Um, and what I will say, you know, like yeah, those. Those XG numbers are, I think, are pretty great, especially given that he was also facilitating Adamola Lookman a lot last sure. year as well. Like, Atlanta like, weren't a great he's, side. He's, for he's quite, the yeah, he's, well. he's got quite a, he's got quite a good all-round skill set in that sense. Um, but yeah, I think any striker, like yeah, we we t- well, we'll talk about this on Team Talk next week. Any striker that doesn't have that much experience going for that kind of price, like. Yeah, it's always you're, it's never going to be a top tier. Um, you know, you can never give it a top grade. But equally, given the strikers on the market this summer, and given the striker market, and the fact it's Man United, if they if he did if they did get him for sixty mil, I think there wouldn't be too like I don't think anyone would be saying that that's a huge like a, like a really stupid fee. Like you know what I mean? It's it's, it's like a standard overpay for yes. a striker yeah. in that kind of market. For him, I don't understand. I get like it's exciting to be linked with Manchester United, but if you look at Holland, Holland had a few good years at uh, Salzburg. He then had some what spent three years, two two seasons was it at Borussia Dortmund? I mean, my, you're you're understating that. I mean, he had three world class seasons okay, before going to Manchester. My, my point is, yeah. yeah. If I was his agent, I'd be saying, prove yourself for another year at Atalanta. I would be saying if you're if you're that good, the agent would be like, get me that fee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. I just think I think, literally. I think I think it's really silly. I think he should have one more year under Gasparini at Atalanta because if he's good enough, he'll get the move at the end of it. Yeah, and the price will be more justified. I think if he goes for this money, and yeah, he's shone in moment. He has looked very good in moments, but if he goes for this money, it's huge pressure on his head to lead the line at Manchester United, and I don't want to see like a young another young player like gobbled up by that system so yeah for me I think this is really silly from him I'm only giving this a, a C fair enough yeah I mean if I was his mother I'd definitely be I don't know why I say mother rather than father but if I was yeah. his mother then that's definitely what I'd be saying but if I was his agent I can understand why his agent's like this is a great opportunity for us mm. Man United if they move on to another target who knows what the such striker market's like yeah. you know next summer um, and, and, and also, and also it. it's like I think I think we're also a bit scarred by like the man united's of the past but like if you look at the players who've come in at united over the last 12 months generally they have that they've they've generally been successes and it's for the first time in 10 years is a genuinely exciting project for a striker to be a part of if you look at like the output that um ten Hag got out of dusan tadic at, at ajax i know completely different players but um, I don't know. I think that that's an attack that you you know you got Bruno Fernandes behind you, one of the best creators in Europe. Like, I don't think it's. I don't know. I, I think it would be like it's easy to look at the past and be like, oh yeah, like this player went there, you know, this striker went there and and didn't perform so well for a big price. Like, ultimately, that depends on what Hoyland's mentality is like. Really, like it's not. It's I don't too know. Too soon. I think it's too soon. Having said Maybe. that, I'm going C. Ten goals last year. C. Um, I'm. I would be going for a. I'd be going for a B. I think on this. We can't just B the whole lot. C. We can't be, I'll go. I'll go for a C. I'll okay. go for a C. Let's it will, for a it C. will turn out to be an A. An A star in two years' time. <laughs> right. Let's words. move on to the next. Let's do them a bit quicker yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Uh, Sosh G N says Falar and Balogun to Inter Milan. Henry thoughts. Oh, I wish you didn't throw that one to me. I can't be bothered to talk about this guy anymore. Um, <laughs> he's, honestly, every show. Do you have beef with Balogun. Oh, yeah, Bal- Balogun. Yeah. We. I just. I. We've discussed. He's. Constantly here, isn't he? Um, he's listen, great striker, unbelievable season last year. He would be great for Inter Milan. I just don't see them getting to the price point which, which Arsenal want. They want fifty million for him. Which, again, I think it's, I think it's slightly the unfair. Is, I think it's slightly yeah. unfair on the players. So d- denying him what could be a great move, either stick in a buyback clause in there or stick in a sell-on clause, 
wherein they get 20% or 25% of whatever he goes next. Because if he's good enough, Inter could basically buy him for 34 and double that up to up to 70. Because kind of go what you're saying, like Lautaro is the only other striker who could probably sell at that kind of top point. But if he's good enough, I'm just like one. He had one good season at, at Rance. I'm not saying he had, it was an incredible season, but it's a lot of pressure again to put on his shoulders. If they could get him through the door for a reasonable fee, then I like it. But for 50 million, I think this is silly. And Inter aren't going to pay that anyway because they can't. They just yeah. can't pay 50 million pounds for a yeah, striker. It's only really a Premier League club that's going to do that. And I don't think Arsenal wants to sell to a rival. Um, yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's not too dissimilar from from Hoyland, um, but it's just that Inter don't have you know like uh, like Inter's financial situation isn't as good um but equally like i think he will be like I, I like personally i just don't think they'll get to that price point anyway so like i'm kind of seeing this as a 35 to 40 million transfer because like the the, the window will run down they won't give them a better offer and Arsenal will have to sell because like, un unless they want to just loan him out somewhere else next season i feel like Balogun wouldn't want that. I think Balogun, if he's got Milan and Inter both after him, um, I know Inter are the, look, look the more likely now. I think he's going to be really pushing for that move, and I think he will be really good there. Like I, I don't know. Like I think with Lautaro alongside him, um, you know, he he picks up great positions in the box. He's played in a two. He can play as a as a you know he he played primarily as a as you know a lone centre forward last year with a number 10 behind him but he's also played in the, in a two again like a bit like Hoyland he, he he's more of a just a classic number nine I think Balogun he's more of an in the box poacher but at the same time can hold up the ball I really like him as well I really like Great him and, and again and again the 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 striker market like yeah the, the striker market is 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 inflated this year um but I don't know. I'm kind of going to go on the basis that Inter just aren't going to pay that, and he and like wh whatever, wherever Ballingen goes, Arsenal are not going to get the 50 mil that they they want. Um, so I think at 40 million, it's a B. Okay, it's definitely a B. Uh, or, B or B or maybe even B plus. Maybe even B plus. I'm 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 going to stick a lot of faith in in, in Ballingen here because he was really really good um, at Rance last year. He was very good. Fair enough. Yeah. I th my only concern with him is that. I think the peak Lautaro was alongside Lukaku. Actually, probably peak Lautaro was actually last, last year. year, probably. But I did think that partnership was so good. And Balogun's just quite a different player to Lukaku. Mm. You know, probably not as good in the wide channels, not as powerful in the wide channels either. He's more of a last shouldered guy, which could work well with Lautaro Martinez, who is more adept at dropping in. But I just don't think it's a it's as, as natural a pairing as Lukaku and Lautaro, which is fine. You know, that's probably their best pairing of the last 10, 15 years. Um, but I think that partnership would take a little bit of work. For me, at 50 million, it's probably a C. At 40, 35, I'll probably give it a B. Uh, right, let's move on to Edmund Tapsoba to Spurs. This came in from FCB MB10 again. So he is being linked with Spurs. He's been linked with Spurs for weeks now. Uh, there is a little bit of concern because of the Joe Lewis news that that might affect Spurs. Mm. But at the same time, apparently he sold his majority spare to share to Enoch. So who knows how it's going to impact their defensive centre-back sort of search uh, but it feels like Spurs are almost getting to an almost Man United level of panic around Man United strikers as they are with their centre-backs because mm -hmm. they just don't have very many centre-backs particularly if Davinson Sanchez goes to Sparta at Moscow which has been talked about in the last few days as well they haven't got Clement Longley back it's Dyer, it's Romero it's Ben Davis I think Tanganga is still kicking around but many people expect him to leave same with Rodon so they do need another centre-back and Edmund taps over you know Leverkusen have just sold Moussa Diaby Four fifty million pounds yeah. plus. Like they don't probably need to sell taps over. At the same time, I'd love to see him in the Premier League, just out of a pure biased opinion. Like he came through halfway through the nineteen twenty season, I think, from Vitoria. And whenever I watched Leverkusen play, I was like, I, I really liked this guy, kind of from the get go. I think he's really, he's obviously very tall. He's very physically dominant. He's pretty good in the air. Although last year his aerial stats did drop off slightly, and he is a very solid passer. He can play in a back three, can play in a back four. I really like him. But I think it's going to cost a fair amount of money to get him out of Leverkusen. So it's kind of dependent on fee. At the same time, if they can get him for 30, 40 million pounds, I'm giving it an A. I like it a lot. I'm actually quite, I'm quite into it. I think, I just think any decent young centre-back in at Spurs at this point is, is an A. 
um, to be mm. honest, as long as as long as it's not too expensive. They've been linked with Mickey van der Ven of Wolfsburg as well, who I think is great. Um, I was thinking as well, Axel de Sassi. You know, he. I don't know why there haven't been more links with him. I know he was. was chat with Man United. Yeah, chat about Man United, United but I don't think. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, for some, I think I think de Sassi needs to go somewhere where there is a, like a an open uh, pocket for him to be like starting every week and 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 Spurs would be able to provide that at the same time I feel like De Sassi and Romero are both quite front foot defenders so maybe they need someone who's a little bit um, yeah. a bit cooler who I think I think Tapsober probably is a bit more like mm-hmm. that um, so yeah I'm happy to go with that just for the fact that we haven't given an A out yet and I feel like we, um, we've we sat on the fence too much we needed one right Henry let's move on to Henry's not, ha- Henry's not two having two players in a row you've not let me grade yet oh, it's unbelievable sorry. it's an A, it's an a. <laughs> okay. I wanted to hear your thoughts I was so keen to hear your thoughts oh, here oh, Emil oh, Hoiberg well, here they to are Let's Go Madrid <laughs> from Mark Probo 13 I mean Quite random. Yeah. But it kind of makes sense. It does make sense, doesn't it? Um, I think when Hoybier has been good, he has been a fun player, sort of very busy in the middle of the park, really dropped off last season, sort of lost a lot of love of the Spurs faithful. Towards the back then, didn't he? Yeah. And I don't... I I actually really like Hoybier. I like like Hoybier too. I actually think Atletico Madrid's... I prefer this to the Soinchu signing that they've made, yeah. which I which is about that. interesting. Um, but yeah, foot, this kind of football Espana saying this, Mark Probo underscore 13, thanks for sending this in. Yeah, I just think, sounding F, we're not quite sure what's going on there. They've sold Condogbia, so there is a space for a kind of hard man in the midfield, as mm-hmm. it were, and I think Hoybier is kind of fits the bill, doesn't he? I mean, and also, he is... When he's on song, his 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 passing into like the final third is good as well. He is he's quite a creative guy. He's good. At, I mean, it helps when you've got Harry Kane, who is brilliant at kind of finding those spaces there as someone to target. But I, yeah, I think. I mean, you've he, got Griezmann to find those yeah, spaces, haven't you? Absolutely, he's absolutely. Like just as good. You're completely right. So, so yeah, I I mean, it's not. I would give this like a C plus. In all honesty, yeah. I'm not overwhelmed by it, but I actually think, you know, another body through the door, a lot of experience. Plays well when he plays for Denmark too, so he's he's a big character, and I think I think that um, yeah, Leslie manager Simi only likes those kind of players in his squad. So yeah, this is fine, but as long as they don't overpay or pay something silly, um, I like it. Yeah, alongside, and also if they get someone like him in, it allow, we, I think we mentioned this yeah. kind of last week. If we get in a more defensive midfielder, it allows more of the creative players to push for, a bit yeah. further forward. So in that regard, I do I I, I don't mind it. So yeah, C plus for me. Is what C I'd give it. Fair. Yeah. I actually like Oiberg. I actually thought he started the season very well last year, particularly going forward. Uh, I thought he picked up some really dangerous positions. I think he finished with four goals and five assists in the Premier League, which is really, really good. But he's not particularly outstanding in anything, mm. but he, I think he's very good at a lot of mm. things, which is a useful player to have. And I think that's kind of, yeah, I think that's almost like, I feel like out of all of Atleti's midfield signings over the last few years, if they got Hoiberg through the door, He'd be the kind of one who wouldn't actually need to adapt that much. He'd just kind of come in and do, big clubs do, and, and do do what Simeone tells him to do, and he's probably done that a thousand mm. times before, whatever he's asked to do. So I do really like that. My one concern would be like, what, where exactly would he play? Because he's not a pure DM, is he? No, he's not. Like, does that then? You know, does that put Rodrigo de Paul's position under threat? Because I think he was really coming into his own last year. Um, hopefully not, um, but. Yeah, I quite like it. I think it depends on the price point, though. For me, I think if they had to pay like over twenty five, I don't think they, I probably, they probably wouldn't do it. I think I saw um, some talk that they were going to try and get him for under twenty million, which is kind of around the price point that Spurs paid for him from Southampton. Um, but I like it. Yeah, I would go more than a C plus. I, I'd potentially go BB plus. I just think, he, yeah, I think he's really, really reliable um, and would be in a an Atleti, uh, in an Atleti system. I think under yeah you know, the last couple of years of deterioration at Spurs, that midfield just was. Yeah, but just crumbling, wasn't it? Whereas I think Atleti at this moment in time, given how strongly they ended last season, he's coming into a really kind of happy bunch of players. Do you know what my prediction would be? Pierre-Emil Hoiberg to be a coach in 20 years. He'd have worked under Pep, Hassenhuttle, Mourinho, Conte. I feel like I'm missing someone obvious. Uh, and then Simeone. That is a hell of a coaching. So gives good, me, gives good, me the like, full spectrum. The full spectrum. Gives me the vibe of when Yapstan became a coach and didn't work out yeah. very well. So. Hoiberg to I think, manage Denmark. A, I, think, I think he had a good three months, didn't he, Yapstan at Reading? But uh, <laughs> that's about it. Right, okay. Hoiberg, uh, what did you guys give it? I quite am tempted by a B. Yeah, yeah let's go for B then. Let's go for B. Another okay. B. And we are going to do these much more quick fire. Carl Walker to Bayern. Henry, yeah. immediate grading. Um, 
I think I'm going to go for a B, 12 million euros, quite a lot for a 33-year-old. We don't know. Yeah. It's Inter- 12 million how much, how much it is, yeah. About 12 million. Yeah. Interesting one, obviously amazing, really remarkable right back, one of the best we've seen in the Premier League for a very long time. B. Okay. Even as a 33-year-old. I was going to go for A. I just think he'd be great at Barn. Oh, yeah. I think he'd be great at Barn. Uh, like, even at, even at that age. This is the thing with... I know, like, uh, like if they if they could get two decent years... If they can get two good years out, out of Carl Walker, why not for that price? Like, and yeah, I... I the I, money so they can sign an elite striker. Yeah, like, he's he's not lost his pace. He's still one of the fastest players in the Premier League at that age. Like, he's exactly the kind of player they need. Like, if they got him and Dreyer, like, that defence is completely sorted. All right. Um, and they don't necessarily need a right-back who is, like, elite going forward because they've already got Alfonso Davis and Rafa Guerrero. Like, I think they just, yeah, they, they need... Yeah, they, they need a right-back who just makes them, like, counterproof. And he is that guy. Fair enough. Carl Walker and Tapsoba are only A's so far. Who'd have thought it? Uh, right, let's do these even, well, as fast. Uh, Yostra Kimmich to Barcelona. I don't think this is happening now. He said he wants to stay. Yeah, it's not happening. It would be an A star, but it's not happening. Mm. Uh, Car- Harry Kane to Bayern Munich. A star if it happens. A star well, if I think happens. it could happen. I'd give it a... I'd give it an A. I wouldn't give it an A star. Just Maybe A the miles. age and the fee. Oh. Just, just the fee. Uh, He's incredible. He, he is he great. Is he, incredible. Is, he, he will be great. But I think, but I think at that price, you need someone who's going to like win you the Champions League. And I'm not sure he's. He, I don't know if he would. I, I would disagree. I he, think, I think he makes some really strong Champions League contenders. Uh, not above Real Madrid, though. I don't think. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Bayern Munich have an ability to turn it on. Like Kim Min Jae and Harry Kane would be a fun got summer. An ability to throw it away as well on the Champions League. Classic bottlers. <laughs> um, no, it's true. Actually, to be fair, Real Madrid don't have a striker through the door yet. So yeah, um, let's go with A. Still very good. A, still very a good. star. A. Uh, Kylian Mbappe to Saudi Arabia. Oh. What's well, lower than just an F? Just depressing. <laughs> yeah. Just depressing, isn't it? Like you know what? It is. It is a move that suits all parties um, in in many ways, but. I just think for Mbappe to have that on his seat, it, it just it's a yeah. blot, isn't it? It's a blot on the Going CV. Going to Saudi at twenty four, yeah. just to earn money for a year. It, I mean, it's also yeah. just like it just shows how what money can if they can go one year deal three hundred million it's just which doesn't make any sense like surely PSG would accept less than that anyway yeah. it's just it just shows that money can buy you anything in this regard and for me that would be an F yeah happens. it's just it's just the most unfathomable like and the wages as well and everything it's just um, yeah just uh, yeah just don't it's sports don't like washing it. just completed like yeah. they've signed the best player in the world in his prime. Yeah. For a year, with with no with no kind of um, with no other like motivation. Like, like, motivation. Yeah, there, there's not really that much more merit to going to. Sa- I, and I'm not. I don't want to disrespect the Saudi league because, like, it, it, you know, there is a football culture there and stuff. And um, you know that there, there other players have gone there and other like decent players in their prime are going there. Um, but obviously, no one on the level of Mbappe. Like, there. Yeah, from Mbappe's perspective, there's no other motivation really, unless there's that. You know, I mean, if, if there is that kind of clause that Real Madrid will be able to meet next year, then then perhaps. But yeah, it just doesn't. Yeah, doesn't sit well, does it? No, it doesn't. To be totally honest, right? Uh, Josko Gavardio just need a rating. A star. A star for you. I like it. It's an A for me. Yeah, I think it's really good. I think he's a very good player. I'm intrigued by the fee, but yeah, I'm happy with A star as well. Romeo Lavia to Liverpool. Ooh. Not Henry's for, um, giving it not for fifty million. I'm sorry, one year at Southampton side where he was just sweeping up balls to put the pressure on him to go and fill Fabinho's and Jordan Henderson's boots mm. uh, at Liverpool for fifty million pounds. I think Southampton are playing a tricky a game here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, blind, blind if they get it through the door. But I, nineteen, still a teenager, could be could be an ace. Could be an A star, but I think at this moment in time, it's a B. He has looked like I don't know. I didn't watch like a ton of Southampton last year, um, but I do remember seeing them play um, City, and for the first half, he was the best player on the pitch. And I think um, we actually shot team talk earlier that's going out mm, next week, we did and talk about this. we we spoke about this. But actually, I've I've had a bit of a change. I think <laughs> if Liverpool if Liverpool do get that forty million for Fabinho. And then do fifty million on Lavia, like yeah, if it no, goes right. well, that is a that is brilliant. Like that is actually brilliant. Like he is more like he well he he is more mobile than Fabinho. Like he obviously isn't as experienced. He's the 
probably not as you know good at the ball and, and you know his his overall tactical intelligence obviously is not going to be as good as a 29 year old Fabinho who has like you know performed achieved at, everything. has achieved everything and actually for his, the, his entire 20s has been you know known for being tactically versatile and tactically intelligent um so you are going to lose that but as a long-term investment having got as good a price as you're ever going to get for Fabinho I actually do quite like it like mm -hmm. I do quite like it um and it's not like they don't have other options as well like I know Bastic also really really young but like he's got like someone in McAllister alongside him who is also like you know does a decent amount of defensive work it is also really tactically intelligent like it's a, for sure it's a risk like spending you know put, putting any teenage defensive midfielder into a side is always going to be a bit of a risk but he does have a really good football education and he was like really good at points last season at Southampton so I do quite like it but having said that I'm not going to give it some really like crazy um, thing I will just go for a B fair enough I will tease my thoughts right this on this all right uh, next week on team talk uh, won't cover what did you, what did you say grand I said B. B oh you did say B okay fine fine basically agreed then let's go that. with B uh, let's roll straight into quick fire questions we've just got one quick fire question which we'll do absolutely rapidly uh, what have you guys made of Lionel Messi's start in the MLS he's, enjoyed it Henry he's just head and shoulders above <laughs> even in that team even in his Inter Miami squad it's absurd, you know. Well, I mean, it's I mean, it's genuinely like almost the worst team in the entire league. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. <laughs> so it's not hard. DeAndre Yedlin. <laughs> we were having a look at the squads the other day. Yeah. They had the old At Atlanta forwards, uh, uh, Martinez. Joseph Martinez. Yeah. So yeah, he's he, he was pretty fun there, but he, that seems to be his level. Otherwise, he would have you know, maybe made the trip across the ponds. Uh, Lazio, by the way, have just signed a really fun MLS striker who was on loan in Girona last uh, year. Tati Castellanos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks fun. Yeah. Looks fun. Nice. Uh, got thirteen goals last year. But anyway, yeah, Messi. That free kick, is, you know, it's great narrative, isn't it? In yeah. front of all those celebrities, 60 minutes, well, whatever it was, the winning goal bends it into the top corner. And then I think you were saying he second game, he's got like another goal and assist. If mm. if he's got happy... Two goals and an assist. Two I think, goals and assist. Yeah. If he's happy and feeling free, he's going to be amazing. But I just get the sense... Feeling free. <laughs> feeling free. Well, just, I just get the sense with this... It's going to reach a point where like no one is on his level and that's going to be unbelievably frustrating at some point because this is a winner. And it's just... I, I almost it's a challenge that, though I almost think the golfing class between him and his teammates is so big that it's meant it's just going to almost be detrimental in some kind of weird way does that make sense I just, maybe yeah, yeah. we're only two games in we're only two yeah, games hopefully in, he'll so still tough. enjoy it but, yeah. but I don't really care I really don't oh, care oh yeah no. I seriously no when I saw the free kick I was like I'm not even surprised anymore I didn't even feel a particular wave of oh well done Messi because I'm just not surprised by anything he does anymore yeah. six months ago we saw him dominate a world cup it's no surprise what he's doing in the MLS no. yeah. I'm happy for him like he's yeah, in, yeah, he's in America he's closer to, closer to his family it's a pretty sweet situation in Miami sort of a yeah, lot of Hispanic mates culture there. yeah I mean he's what gets to hang out with Bex who yeah. like remains an incredibly cool man um, <laughs> and, and Kim Kardashian yeah and Kim K and um, or Kim K was actually over watching she Ronaldo in, in, in yeah. Japan uh, the other day as well um, and I, I don't know if you saw that, that you know our old friend um, not old friend but Speed uh, <laughs> managed, I saw him always friends with Speed he, no we're not definitely not uh, well we did like his World Cup song um, but we, weird guy otherwise but um, <laughs> clearly very charismatic but um, I saw he um, I think Kim Kardashian's kid was in a PSG show because it was PSG Al Nazir and um yeah, Speed was like, "Oh, what, what are you doing in that PSG shirt?" And then Kim Ka Kim Kardashian took a was there taking a picture of her kid with Speed, which is just a bit absurd, isn't it? That like you know maybe the, you know one of the five most famous people in the world was taking the picture with like um, a fan. Yeah, like a fan. Um, but uh, what we saying? But yeah, but that's what that's what is. I don't know. What's funny about Inspire Me is that I I was looking. I think they had maybe won one game since like April in the league and then Messi just comes in and then last minute scores maybe you know the greatest free kick that's ever been seen in, in that league <laughs> I was about to say right? <laughs> I was going to no, say no, no. that was wild yeah, but it was in reverse of Carlos <laughs> alright yeah but I mean um, definitely in that league yeah yeah but like yeah, well, in, maybe, in the, maybe, maybe, maybe not but in terms of just pure technique I think Messi just like I just think he is the best free kick taker of all time to be honest but, um, but yeah I don't know it's just funny seeing like all these like Miami celebs just like turn up in the stadium. Like DJ Khaled was there. Like, has he ever seen a football game before? No. Uh, maybe I'm being unfair. Maybe he's a big soccer fan. But um, and then I also saw that I think after he went off on 75 minutes um, against Atlanta, 
which to be fair is impressive like Atlanta are a much better side than Inter Miami and Messi inspired them to a 4-0 four, four win um, but I think as soon as he went off which was I think yeah maybe with 15 minutes to go like the, like just everyone started leaving yeah. the stadium which is really really funny it's is, it is funny uh, how LA Galaxy were that side for so long and they've almost completely disappeared mm -hmm. you know they're, they're com or in disarray in disarray and suddenly Inter Miami's become the new kind of glitzy shiny operation as yeah. well Arba there we have it I've just got Speed's World Cup song stuck in my head. It's so good. <laughs> World Cup. Anyway, that is the end of Continental Club uh, for this yeah. week. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we're not going to push uh, to anything other than yesterday's transfer talk show. Go and watch that. Thank you so much for watching Continental Club for this week. Let us know what you guys made of our gradings, how you agree or disagree. Let us know in the comments and we will catch you later in the week. Bye-bye.